Si- <laughs> <laughs> <You> cannot talk. <laughs> Welcome to Ramble Mancy, everybody. <laughs> I, I knew, nope, I knew the over. instant I started flexing, I was like, he's going to take us live on this, isn't he? Nope. I mean, I did not see that coming. Here's the thing. No, I... Here's mm-hmm. the thing. I didn't, in fairness, <sighs> I did not know where that was going. Um... <laughs> no, I was trying to, I was actually trying to like do, I was just trying to warm up actually, like vocally. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, <laughs> but mm-hmm. yeah, like, you, you know, do. like, you know, you do. Um, that was, <laughs> incredible timing because the thing is it doesn't go live right away when i click the button so i had absolutely no way of knowing what was ah. going to happen and it just perfect um so yeah welcome to the ramble mancy where we open by me patting myself on the back for something that i had nothing to do with um hi everybody <laughs> um we evening. good evening and welcome to ramble mancy um Ooh. tonight i will be playing <laughs> This the old sage in the tower, and we will be discussing. Uh, no, nah, I'm not gonna do that. That's gonna oh, destroy my voice oh, for the rest. Like, yeah, oh, fair enough. Um, <clears throat> tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, welcome everybody, and hello. Um, I just now realized I forgot to do something. So, um, we're gonna start by throwing somebody under the bus early, and J- John and or Freeman riff for a little bit while I fix this. <laughs> Oh, okay. It's been a long time since I've been thrown under the bus this way, but by way of introduction, I will be playing uh, 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 Freeman Loma tonight. <laughs> um, Freeman Loma, as he is played by uh, by Sir David Attenborough. As <laughs> played by Sir David Attenborough. Wait, is he no, a sir? A, I don't know that that is he. That's a twist. Is he? I thought it was. I thought, I thought he was, was too, but I. Who who knows? He Probably somebody in chat does. He he ought to be right. Anyway. Come on. Yeah. It's uh, it's good to see everybody in chat. Congrats and thank you so much for the ten month three sub Remy. Also, hello oh. Derpanduin. I see you in the chat, Nico. We've got uh, our our regular moderator here, Amethyst Cat Lady. Uh, hey, I see Geek Outs. I see Karaoke Night is here, uh, nice. decorating the tree with Jolly Old Obnixilis. Heck which yeah. actually is a very that, that username is very well timed for this part of the year i guess <laughs> now i can't stop thinking about that username being uh sung to the tone of uh jolly old saint nicholas oh my. Jolly old, jolly old wait Bob is that is that the joke have i been missing the joke this whole time <laughs> yeah it's, I think is the that joke. The, was that the joke <laughs> oh dean how could i miss you dean oh hey well, hello dean and i see a heart of handprints Oh, thank God. John didn't remember. Didn't remember what? <laughs> what? Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Man. Those moments now. Those moments. <laughs> what have I forgotten? <laughs> oh, Wait man. a minute. I forgot what we're talking about. Wait is, you know, a minute. Impro- Are you? Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Der Panduin's birthday. So I need <gasps> what? everyone in chat to smother him with love. Let's do it. Let's do it. Nico. Mm. Happy damn birthday. Happy birthday, Nico. Betrayal. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I can't find the thing that I'm looking for, (laughs) y'all. Oh. I can't find what I'm looking for. Oh, no. It's... It'll turn up eventually, but for now, I'm not going to do it. We're just going to... We're just going to go right into our episode, I guess. Um... That's the joke. Okay, cool. Good, good. Uh, and I'm glad it only took me like several years to realize that. Um, <laughs> so, um, this is it. Oh, oh, hold on. That's okay. right. Time zones. It's actually currently Nico's birthday where yeah, he is. Yeah, I was, I was going to say. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> That's right. Happy birthday, Happy mm. birthday to our uh, to one of our to one of our oldest and most favorite mobs. Yeah, um, I will. We will say that the liquid that is currently in this vessel, I am drinking to you, my friend. Um, the un the the undetermined liquid that is in. Mm-hmm. Cheers. <laughs> <clears throat> oh man, well. Tonight, we are talking about the process for character creation. Not, like, mechanically, 
although we could probably mention a few of those things too because it'll it'll factor into the conversation but more like Mm -hmm. what do you think about like let's get it let's really dive into your process um i I will let's talk about your process (laughs) (laughs) um but before we do that we've got some announcements to get through uh which i had somehow bamboozled myself into believing we'd already done which we didn't so um ignore Mm -hmm. what i just said and just sort of push it forward in time maybe like two or three minutes and pretend I said it then. Um, So uh, we announced our new, the cast of our new upcoming show in too deep, a water deep dragon heist actual play uh, run by uh, Colin Kelly, who uh, is running an official D and D module on the rule of lore. Uh, and we'll be running an, with a with a, a brand new cast, mm. never before seen on this channel, uh, um, of all LGBTQ plus folks, and it's gonna be great. I am very very excited. Uh, the chaos that will come from this cannot be measured. Um, and even if it could be, why would you do that? Um, but. Uh, it will start technically the actual campaign as in where the actual module starts uh, will start in January when we come back from our break. Um, I'm sorry. My nose is super itchy. I'm very sorry, everybody. It's not going away. Um, And next week, which those of you who have seen the announcement will have noticed that the announcement, uh, the start date is technically listed as next week Uh, on Tuesday the eighth um because i definitely a, a messed fact up the, that uh... we have gotten correct every single time we have announced it and on every platform yep and every single member of rule of lore has gotten it correct every time um mm-hmm. <laughs> tuesday december 8th at 3 30 p.m pacific time they will actually be starting with uh not the whole cast they'll be doing just a couple of the cast at a time doing uh character prologues so just like the events of some of the characters coming together just before the actual start of the campaign um so next week will be the first one and the week after that will be the rest of the crew so it'll be kind of a two-part prologue uh that you will get to see it'll be a give you everybody a chance to meet and get to know the characters get to know the setting a little bit um it'll be a fun time um and speaking of our break uh starting the week of uh, Jan- uh, January, the week of what What month is it? What year yeah, is right. it? The week of December 20th, we, we will be dark. So Ramblemancy, I believe that is on the 18th, and that will be our last broadcast of 2020. So um, <clears throat> that will... Uh, that that will be uh, our our the beginning of our break, and we will come back uh, first week of January with Infinite Horizon, not in too deep. We will come back with Infinite Horizon on Wednesday the sixth, January sixth, uh, and go back to our usual schedule at that time. Um, yeah, the the year of December twentieth. Listen, I am trying to be an optimist. And hoping that that week will in fact not be a year. So unlike <laughs> literally every other week mm-hmm. in this year. <laughs> uh, um, oh anyway, that's kind of our main announcement. However, I get to talk about, now that we're currently on the most relevant episode of Ramble Mancy, I get to talk about next episode of Ramble Mancy. And I'm very excited because we have not talked about this publicly yet. So, <clears throat> a couple weeks ago, we did an episode of Ramble Mancy that was bad show and movie pitches. Mm-hmm. And because of the public outcry, a.k.a. we decided we wanted to, um, <laughs> we decided to do a part two, uh, which is probably one of the fastest turnarounds of a part two we've ever had. Um, yeah, actually, I think I think this is maybe like three, four weeks yeah. after the fact. So we're um, going to do a part two, and we are going to have a guest, uh, a new guest. We are going to be graced 
by the presence of one Alex Perkins, uh, who will be here uh, just creating terrible ideas for media with us. Um, those some may, Many of you may remember Alex from It Came From The Loop. Our short run Tales from the Loop game, yeah. Remy's already excited. I'm, 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 I'm uh-huh. here for it. Like, heck, heck yeah. yeah. So, so Alex, Alex is one of the funniest human beings oh, absolutely. I've ever met, and so, I cannot wait to see what she dreams up. Yeah, I am so excited. <laughs> so, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna be, we're gonna be doing that, and it's gonna be a time. Like, yeah. So, so yeah. Next week, a week from today, we will be doing bad, bad show and movie pitches part two with Alex Perkins. Yeah. It's going to be excellent. I'm so excited. All right. I'm so ridiculously pumped. Also, uh hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <Pew>. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Pew, pew, pew. Um, <clears throat> nice. <clears throat> All anyway, right. Um I was going to say hello to Bree and Verdiman. Good to see you in chat. Hey. And then I looked over just in time to ban someone. So Yeah. yeah perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, yes. All right. Well, <laughs> let's. Uh, okay, tree's done. I'll post a pic. Hell yeah. Let's. Ooh, that sounds fun. We should do that. We should like people should like post their like. Fe- like in the Discord, we should have everybody oh, yeah. like everybody show us your your decorations. I want to see them. I don't. I don't. It doesn't matter how small, how how big, how extravagant, how minimal. I just want to see them. It'll be yeah. fun. Um, I was I always like seeing what people put up. Yeah. All right. Let's actually start this episode. Um, Ooh. You know, I, I we we've we've all we've all been there. We've created some characters for a TTRPG. Mm-hmm. It's time to it's time to play, and you're like, wait a minute. I need to play a character. What am I gonna play? Who is this person? I'm gonna stop doing this bit, whatever it is, because it's no. I was just. I can't. I can't. I'm currently. I'm currently that person. I am in that boat because I am playing in a game that Remy is going to be running. Hey, that's awesome. Uh, Yeah. 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 No. Just like a just a a fun home game, but like uh, I still have not finalized my character, and I'm sorry for that, Remy. So so. Just to get us as far away from whatever that bit was as possible, I'll just begin with a simple question, which is character, what do? Character, what do indeed? What do? (laughs) What do any of us do? I'll give me a moment. I'll give me a moment, because it's been a while since I've actually created a character, because, well, Mason was already kind of created. The concept of Mason was tested. Right, right. So it's been a while since I've actually made a character, but I know that I know what I do, and I just have to put I put it together in my brain a little bit here before I actually go into it. Yeah. Um, all I can see, like all I can hear in my head with Nico's like latest message in chat uh, is character creation yeah. never ends. Yep, I I it's knew true. you were gonna go for the bowling for soup reference. I just knew it. <laughs> I, will always, I will always go for the bowling for soup. Mostly because that's the first thing that happened to me too. That's the first thing that happened in my head too. It's yeah. sort of um, like also with a play too. You go, you you're you're rehearsing. You go to the tech week, which is always the most stressful, and then of course opening night, and then the the show run. But even the show runs are in in themselves a sort of like a rehearsal. You're always kind of yeah. like perfecting the piece. You know, you're always perfecting the character that you're playing as you go. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just kind of walk in like, what's my motivation? No, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, like, so how? What do you think about? What kinds of things do you think about when you're making a character? Um, oh. I think a lot. I think a lot about the feel. Like, I what I tend to do. I think one of the ways that I think I tend to start is I just walk around uh, talking to myself for a while until I say something that sounds cool, and I'm like, who would say that? Um, like, and that's that's one of the ways that I will arrive at a character sometimes is just like you know saying cool stuff to myself, um, like, and and that like that will give way I think sometimes to them like that's a that's a starting place for me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like you mean you mean literally starting with like a line of dialogue or something like that, or just sort of a general like attitude. An atti- like an attitude tends to give like tends to give me the line of dialogue. Mm-hmm. So like I think I think I start somewhere in the vicinity of per- like Dean just said genre personality cool factor and like I think I start somewhere in the vicinity of personality or uh, or or genre not really genre but like mostly in the vicinity of like personality, and then like 
uh, I say things until I think I arrive at something sound that sounds that sounds like them, and then I'll start to I'll start to explore around that a little bit. Hmm. So, yeah. Um. <laughs> sorry, I just <laughs> I just had an ADHD moment. You know, one of those moments where you like like the same one that we had the other day when we were talking to John, where you like somebody says something and then your brain goes to something totally unrelated and then follows it through like a whole series of weird like things and uh my thought was like yeah sort of like i imagine it's a similar process to like what what people who program twi- uh, twitch bots go through like what's the shtick of this bot what's their motivation which is honestly what i'm currently still thinking about i'm still thinking about like whoa what is what was the point of that bot? <laughs> that's yeah. what I want to know. Was it a bot or was it a troll? I who knows? Like right, right, right. The account was an hour old, so like probably who a the bot. Hell knows? Yeah, probably but it could be like bot. a troll dummy account. Whatever. I don't know. I'm just very like I almost wish that they had continued just so I can know. Yeah. What oh, were they trying to accomplish? <laughs> Oh man, I missed it. I missed it. You guys it was. Have to catch it's me not. Up later. Yeah, I'll, we'll talk about it later. It's not worth it now. Um, but yeah, you know, like, now, now that I think mm-hmm. about it, and this is the last, like one of the last things I assume I will say about this. But like, mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm sure that I have seen that message before mm-hmm. from bots. Like the more that I think about it, I'm, mm-hmm. I am, I am like a hundred percent certain that in somebody oh, else's weird. channel that I mod for, that I have seen a bot say that exact thing. Yeah. Just with it. <sighs> All right. They let's need... see. Hmm? Uh, more original material. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, no, no. Uh, yeah. Let's see. <sighs> um, okay, so Jolly Old Nomixler says, I love to think up weird concepts and then try to piece it together using the game mechanics. Yes, okay. same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um I think yeah. that's the place that I tend to start as character. Like, is I don't tend to go mechanics to concept. I tend to go concept to mechanics. Although sometimes, sometimes, right. like I'll look at something and be like, "That's so fucking cool! I have to make a character that does that." Mm-hmm. I think yeah. it went first mechanics first because D and D is very mechanical. Mm-hmm. Well, almost, a lot of games are, but in D and D, it's like I got such a uh, enjoyment out of rolling the D sixes. In our case, that's what we did. I would think we'd roll 46s mm-hmm. and remove the lower. Right, right. And then I would go from there. And But now I love the concept more. And then kind of forming. Because with Cypher, we don't roll dice to make our right. stats. We just make the concept. And then we go through the book. And we look for what, what, the, what the, um, the names give us. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting point. Because like, I'm sure there is a way. I'm sure that there are probably plenty of people who who like start with the in cipher start with the options and go that's cool i want to do that yeah. but like more often than not what i've seen is people starting in cipher starting with a concept and then going all right now which of these things that's in here best fits that concept mm-hmm. like i don't know that that's necessarily always the case my like my evidence is purely anecdotal but like mm-hmm. i it seems like it'd be easier in Cypher to go with concept first sort of thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think it's kind of designed that way. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and I know we have some of the CU guys in chat. So, like... Yeah, I mean, anybody who has more experience with Cypher, please feel free to weigh in on this particular issue. <laughs> That's really been, like, my experience, though, when I'm making Cypher characters, because I've made two or three at this point. Um, yeah. Uh, and, like, it's always been for me, I want to play this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then I go and look for ways to make that happen in Cypher. And Cypher's very, very good at doing that, like for you, because it because of the way that you make your character and the way that you kind of structure it and pick your mechanics based on like the descriptors and stuff like that. Yeah. And I will say for Cypher, like they do such a cool job of making their character descriptors and their foci like very much feel like it does the thing that it's describing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah, Dean says Cypher kind of encourages that approach. Yeah, that's – and, yeah, I guess I said that without really thinking through what I was saying because, yeah, it, it obviously it does because that's literally the basis of your character is a character concept, right? The whole I am an adjective noun who verbs is literally the format of a character concept. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, like, I imagine, like, with, with – D and D, I feel like the progression is more like, is more like, oh, okay, what do the classes do? What 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 do I want to do? What do I want to be mm-hmm. able to do? 
and then you go concept once you figured out like oh i think it'd be fun to play a fighter and then you do that um but and do that when you first come to it versus later on when you've like done that a lot and now you're like i want to see if i can make some sort of weird planes wizard or something like that right and just and then like try to find mechanics to fit your concept whereas cypher i feel like would probably be the opposite right where in early on coming to cypher you'd be like all right i have this idea let's see if i can make that with this idea and then later on you're like all right what haven't i done yet let's see and like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like I, I can't I can't really see somebody coming to Cypher and being like, yeah, I want to play specifically the who builds robots focus. <laughs> That's my character. Like, you mm-hmm. know, and like, sure, maybe it is. Maybe people like I'm, I'm sure that people do come to come sure, to Cypher that way. Yeah. But like, it does seem like a system that's very much like meant for you to come out at the other direction. <laughs> yeah. And Dean's basically oh. consider or, uh, confirming what I said, which is so it's good to know that I'm that's I'm not alone in that perception of these things because that's yeah that's kind of the, my 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 thoughts behind those are sort of that they are totally opposite in how you approach the character build, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, um. So there was a comment yeah. earlier, like we had a very writerly comment earlier, which was that I think like as in terms of starting places, like I think of cool character concepts I love already are like characters that I like in media and then like trying to and try to and then I try to figure out if there's anything new that I can do in that space, mm. um, which I think like games are very good at prompting you to do in the way that like when you're when you're choosing like class abilities or character abilities and things like that, it can be it can be like kind of a cool way to explore like um, or you can you can be like, but what if what if this character that I like could also do this? Or like one of the right. things in your best game ever, they're like, you know, when you're trying, if you need to create a character on short notice, just like you know, elevator pitch, take two characters that you like and smash them together and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. I saw also that uh, Vertiman just sort of expanding on what Jolly said earlier, which is I tend to do something similar but with narrative ideas. If I can take a character's game mechanics and create an interesting prologue for them, then I can feel confident that my DNA or my DM and I can create engaging gameplay going forward. And I now really want to see what you would do with Cipher. I want to see that. I'm gonna have to. I know I've said this to you before, but I, I I'm gonna have to run Cipher for you one day because. I'm very curious to see what you would make of that. One of these days, either you or I are going to run Cypher for our home game. Yeah. <laughs> like, one of these days. Yeah. Um, Nico says, my characters usually come from a single idea that I will ask myself questions about to figure out uh, where to go with it. That's cool. Okay, so that's that's an idea that I, that I, I think I've seen in many instances, both in, like, in terms of concept and in terms of, like, products that exist for tabletop RPGs. There's, like, like figuring out characters via questions that you ask about who this person is. Mm-hmm. And that that's never been useful to me because but not because it's not an it's not a good approach, but because I think it's sort of what when I'm when I'm running a game, that's sort of naturally what I do when I'm doing character creation with my with with my players. If I'm doing it alongside them, I will just naturally ask them questions about their character. So like those like when i say not your approach has not been useful to me but the products that are like built around that approach of asking questions like i have a couple of them like there's one that i got a while back like the the um god what is it called i think it's called like the character hot seat or something like that character creation uh-huh. hot seat or something like that that asks it's uh has a bunch of questions that you can ask and you can, you can uh it's like it's it's a chart a series of charts that you can roll dice on to determine which questions you ask uh, it's actually a really cool product. I'll, I'll see if I can find it and then figure out what it is so I can link it to you. Or if somebody else knows about this and has a link ready, feel free to post it either in chat or the Discord, both, whichever. Um, but essentially, like, you ask different questions. And the the rule is that when you're creating your character, you ask a question. It's a question that is basically, like, a, has a yes or no answer. Like, did your character do this? Did your character have this happen to them? And you can answer yes or no. But the, the 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 rule is that if you answer no, you uh, if either way you answer, you have to add a detail. So like if you mm-hmm. answer yes, you're like yes, and this and this other thing happened. Um, so it it prompts you to like yes and or no basically, and or no yeah. but like yes but yourself. Yeah. Right, right. Um, and so it's it's a cool thing, but it's kind of it's never helped me per se because usually. I have a pretty strong concept of what I want to do when I make a character. 
or at the very that's not true i have a very strong concept of what i don't want to do <laughs> sure. that's important too <laughs> and so yeah uh which weirdly doesn't help narrow it down all the time mm-hmm. um but yeah i like the i like that approach of like asking questions um let's see i saw karaoke night says sometimes i like to look at other people's character art for inspiration yes Ooh, that's a good absolutely. one that's a really good yeah. one i um the cycle of inspiration is very very cool to me people mm-hmm. make stuff and then that inspires other people to make stuff mm-hmm. um i wrote about that this week but like uh the i know that that's happened to me before too where i will see art of something and i'm like oh that's so cool like i want to i want to i want to be that <laughs> Right, or I want to yeah. be something like that. Uh, there's actually one of the NPCs that I drew. Um, oh, yeah, one of the NPCs in uh, in the Dreamwell Chronicles, like, sort of came about just because of a piece of art that I found, and I was like, I want this character. I'd like this character is cool, and I want them to exist. Hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> Mm. let's see Remy says I'll either think up a really high level concept like gambling theme clown theme or a challenge to either me or the character mechanically uh, i.e. a cursed character or some character with uh, with traits that go against their race or class yeah I'm all about weird weird combinations when I make characters um, I like I like either weird combos or going against the grain of like the archetypal version of that um like john john has seen this in action many times most mm-hmm. recently i made a like in as far as D D characters i made a cleric but not the healy type i made a war cleric and his whole shtick was like i'm here to fight nobody said not not win i'm here to fight <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> winning that- is secondary that's <laughs> That was my that was my favorite thing about him <laughs> about about Bashir was mm-hmm. just that like anytime someone's like, I don't know if that's such a good idea, and then Bashir would just be like, Yeah, well, I didn't say anything <laughs> about winning. I just I'm just here for a good fight. Like <laughs> yep. who said anything about a good idea? There were <laughs> lots of times uh, I took the gesture approach to cl- playing a cleric where like there mm-hmm. were lots of times where I just straight up didn't even prepare a healing spell. <laughs> <laughs> the Jester oh, Lavor, <laughs> the Jester Lavor school of clarity. Yeah, love it. Listen, you don't need healing if you just defeat your enemies better. They can't hurt you if they're dead. Yeah, come on. There's something there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um let's see. I'm looking at. I have to. I have to say, yeah. like, when it comes to like in the past when we've done character creation in person it's that it's another layer and i can i can just barely remember it what it was like being in the same room <laughs> I, can al- I can almost it's remember it's been 84 years <laughs> i almost made that reference <laughs> early <laughs> i I have to say that sometimes yes. the character creation for me is almost like another session because you have your session mm-hmm. zero, which is before, mm-hmm. and then you go into the game. But then the character creation, I feel like I could spend a day doing just character creation with a bunch yeah. of folks just hanging out and getting really crazy with their character and then actually going into it. I, I love that. When, and uh, when I'm at home doing it, like if I'm kind of just sitting down thinking of a character which happens often i suppose i'll i'll turn on some depending on the theme i'll turn on like some music Mm -hmm. i'll get so so if it's like fantasy i'll put on some epic fantasy music Mm -hmm. and i'll kind of put it not Mm -hmm. like blasting because otherwise my head will just explode so i'll put it on (laughs) and then i'll like and then i get like i'll roll the dice i love that part for D. &D. Mm -hmm. i love rolling the dice so much i don't know why i don't know what it is maybe Maybe I have a gambling problem. Uh, so I love rolling. You're just the channeling it in creative ways. Yeah, I've never mm-hmm. gambled once actually. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and then putting, and then writing that, writing those numbers down, and then getting into the paper. For some reason, I love doing that, and then coming up, yeah. with, kind of coming up with stuff from the mechanics, and going from there. Uh, 
I don't know. Definitely. It's hard to pick though. It's hard to pick which one I love the most. I love them all. Yeah. Um, Remy, you and you and Remy both no. after after my own heart <laughs> here with like because there 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 are songs oh, yeah. in in my playlists that I'm like this is characters song. I'm like it right. and it will always be like um way back way back in like the early part of this year I had just started playing in that uh in that in in the cyberpunk game that I am in and uh I was like at the gym working out or something and like I just like the expo like the the explorer like the the next the next random song function came on because I'd hit the end of a playlist on SoundCloud and it came up with something new and like 30 seconds into it I'm just like oh this song belongs to Anne like this is this is this is absolutely her and so like now it, there's there's just like at the top of all of the EDM songs that I'm like these belong to this character is that one Perfect. so and anytime anytime I need to like I, I will listen to it anytime I'm, I'm getting into getting into like I need to get into character because it get, like it helps me it helps it helps ground me in that and sometimes Ooh. like Sorry, go sometimes ahead. characters have come out of that like too i'll just hear yeah. a really cool song and imagine something happening and like there's the character all of a sudden there was a significant portion of my uh like back when i was playing when i were running i was running our home D D game uh there was a significant amount of my of my care of my like session planning that was like there was a, actually there was a serious, significant period of time where my entire the entirety of my session planning was just like let me listen to epic music yeah. and then like what does this evoke and then like that and then I just build a session around whatever scene I pictured in my head I build like a whole session around that and it might not be the next session but that but that built a session of like okay what's the context of this scene I now have in my head and then I would yeah. build sessions leading up to that right and I would like mm -hmm. build like I was like okay how do I get from where they are now to that scene um oh, and amazing. i won't say anything more than this this is the this is the only time probably that you i won't i'm too chaotic for me to, to like actually stick to this but this is probably one of the only times that you will hear me talk about a future episode of infinite horizon oh um, this is no spoilers there's no spoilers here but uh but the ne next week's episode of Infinite Horizon started in very much the same way where not not from music, but just a, a scene that I had in my head that I was like, how do I make that happen? So yeah. anyway, I love yeah. that. No, like I, I, I love I love doing that in that way, because so often like and it like so often I'll have like a very vivid image in my head of something happening and that's such a rich place to write out from like you know you can start with an image and then like a series of images like around that become the scene and then you're like okay I have this amazing scene I need to get here <laughs> yeah I... yeah no and it's and it's so interesting because more often than not that's a that's a great way of of GMing too because one of the best it's one of the best ways to ensure that like that players can drive the story because then you can just be like that's i know i know that's where they're going i don't know what comes in between there so i'll just let them do what they do and then i'll just pick up like if they if they start doing something that like maybe lead like i'll just wait a good example of this <laughs> again with infinite horizon this is a previous a past episode of infinite horizon um the the i think it was episode three of this season um there was that flashback scene with Bina and Mason mm -hmm. in the in in Awakener's engine room, right? My only thought for that scene was I know that that scene is going to create is going is going to be like setting up the fact that the the idea that um it's going to be a scene where Bina solves a problem on Awakener because she has help and is connected to other people like to cut to her friends. I didn't know what the problem was. I didn't know how the scene was going to play out. I just said, okay, I want that scene to happen. That's what I'm trying to get at. And I just put Mason and Bina in the same scene. And I just said, this is a flashback go. Uh, and then I waited for Freeman to say something in the conversation that was like plausibly could plausibly jog a solution in Bina's mind. And then I just like, jumped on it as soon as he said something and just ran with it and that's and that's like such a good way of that's a good way of uh like character creation you could use that same approach in character creation as i've done many times where you make a character without having any clear idea of what they're gonna be you just have like 
one thing that you can hold on to and you wait for somebody else to say something that you're like, yes, that I'm yep. taking that. Yep. Right. Yep. Or you, it's a good way of running a game too. Mm -hmm. I, a lot of times at character creation, I will, I will wind up with a few of those kind of scenes in my head and they're mm -hmm. still like a little bit vague and I'll just leave them that way. And I'll be like, this is a really cool moment. And I'm just going to wait for, wait for it, wait for somebody to prompt it. And then, and then like that, that's something that I love doing when I'm like, and continuously as I, as I, as I like play the character too, but it's one of those fun things that's it, that, that I think like mm -hmm. makes for some very interesting, like early gameplay as the character is like having a few just like cool things that, you know, that, you know, that they're going to do at some point and then being able to just like pull other players in, into that moment. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Cause that's the thing. Like, I feel like. And I don't know that this is really what we're talking about tonight because this is more about like gameplay. But the idea of like being able some some uh, but I think it's it's worth talking about now because it is sort of part of creating a character, which is the idea of creating a character in play. Um, so like not creating the whole character beforehand. Um, because there have been many times where uh where I've made a character and decided details about them while playing. Like a notable instance was uh, when uh, we were playing, this was back when we were playing 3.5 and I had a character, cool. we were we were eating dinner, we were eating a feast in a, in a village. There was like during a festival and my character just on, like only ate like the fruits and stuff like that. There, like there was a fishing village and there were fish and stuff like that. There was fish as part of the, uh, the, uh, the spread. And my character only ate the fruits, and my in my mind, I just had sort of a vague notion of like how he didn't really trust any of the any of the new villagers or any of the villagers that they were eating with because he felt they were too friendly. They were being too friendly, mm -hmm. and so like had this idea of like, well, I'll eat the fruit, but nothing else. But then one of the other players sort of latched onto that detail, and they're like, "Do you not like fish?" And I was like, I thought about explaining it, and I was like. No, this is an opportunity. And so I just like developed a character quirk that my character just did not like fish because he grew Perfect. up in the mountains and like uh like these fish are like there are fish in mountains and the streams and whatever, but these are weird fish. These are like sea fish. This is strange right, right. and I don't it's like not it. Freshwater fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. That's awesome. Also, welcome, Gemini. It's good to see Hello. you. Hello. Uh, yeah, I remember that moment. Mm -hmm. Um But I don't like I don't know that I don't know that like create character creation in play is necessarily like where we're mm. going True. tonight but i figured mm. it was worth bringing it up but. i like that because i feel like a yeah. character is kind of there is little bits of creation that are happening along the way but for sure you were talking a little bit earlier about like character like creating mm. characters in the same room as other people and i find mm. that that's like that's or like you know and the the substitute obviously in in 2020 is is doing it on call with people but like there i i remember like when we were finalizing characters at the at a gen con game of D, D that we played um like uh caitlin and i wound up just like m inventing a whole like history between our two characters over the course of like five minutes of sitting next to each other um just because like i said something about some ability that i had and then caitlin commented and then like we just had a very brief conversation about like what that probably meant about the two characters and like that's that's a very cool thing i think about making yes. character like creating your character with other people um it's a very or like finalizing your character around other people is the ways in which like that can also build party bonds or just like kind of create create camaraderie or rivalry within a within a within a uh, an adventuring party like at the at like at the very outset yeah exactly i love that i like what uh nico said a little earlier which is uh in reference to the the gming style i was talking about earlier which is it's basically road trip gming instead of instead of railroading one straight line between the beginning of the game and the end with little to no wiggle room. This is more like sitting in the car with your players with a common goal in mind and having them tell you which routes to take. The only thing you need to worry about is how to reach the next gas station. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it, I think. I like that. Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a very... <laughs> I know that you're not from the U.S., but it's a very, like... I have a, I have a very, like, Midwest aesthetic to that like just driving and driving and driving and driving hundreds of miles to the next like little small town gas station 
Yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's that, that sounds like a a, a country song. <laughs> <laughs> a good one a good one <laughs> uh gemini says when done correctly character rivalries are way more influential than character bonds you just need to be in communication at all times about where it's going yep 100 percent. i absolutely agree uh because character bonds are like the kinds of things that you expect bon- bonds are kind of like what nico is talking about they're they're like the destination in some cases and the destination is often far less interesting than the journey <laughs> yeah yeah, right. it's the get that's the cool part. Especially if the journey is long. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, if you look at if you look at uh at rivalry and and bond and like friendships and bonds or whatever mm-hmm. as like two sides of a of like a slide of a slider um the longer you make that slider <laughs> the more interesting the in between gets. And I think that's cool. Like, I mean, I suppose there's a limit to that. There is a, there's a turnaround point, I suppose. But yeah, I agree with you. It's they can be often more interesting. Um. Hmm. I had another question Gem- and it went away. Oh. Gemini brings up another favorite trope of mine. He just says a rom- a romance begotten of a rivalry is so powerful because the force that took them that it took because of the force that it took them to overcome such rivalry is powerful enough to overcome a rivalry in the first place. So, mm-hmm. um, spoilers for uh, Gideon the Ninth, uh, but it is one of my favorite things about Gideon the Ninth. And like, it's not really spoilers. You can tell from like the second chapter that that's what's going on here. But, um, yeah, yeah, that is that is another another interesting thing. So. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. I also, I too had a question. I was going to ask you. Yeah, guys. go it for totally it. Totally slipped my, oh. it slipped my mind. I well, was then thinking don't go right for it. We, yeah, I won't go for I've, it. I've actually, I think I've got one. I wrote one down yeah. earlier today when Ooh, I had it. Like, writing like stuff down. Sentence. That's that's oh, a thing that hey. it's a novel concept that oh, I me, have never let me considered. Let me see. <laughs> we actually we talked we we talked Man. kind of through. We kind of had the, uh, the the mechanics first or concept first conversation already, which is one of the other things that I wrote. But I also wrote down. Um, do you have Do you have a notably different process? for different systems when you're making characters. Um, like, is there, is, do you approach like D&D differently than you approach Cypher, differently than you approach Weave, differently than you approach Lasers and Feelings? And I, 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 know, I, know, that, I know that those are like, some of those are very wildly different games, mm-hmm. um, but. I think, well, go ahead, Freeman. Oh, I was just gonna say it's, it's different now, but I feel, I feel like the, it was kind of the same when we were all together in the same room. It's a similar process, mm. but yeah. now it's a little it's a little different now that we're all kind of we're we're doing it online, but we're in our separate spaces. It's a little it seems a little different to me. I, I really don't know how to explain it. It's just like the the process is a little more. It's a different kind of chaos, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I really don't know how to explain that, but it's a different kind of chaos because the chaos that you you that is made from creating characters in the same room it's kind of like it's it's energetic it's it's boisterous it's i don't know it's fun it's fun i, I don't know it's the, the dice are clacking they're hitting the ground they're like everyone's crazy it's like oh wait what chapter is that on and someone's over your shoulder like no it's on that chapter right there turn the page and it's just completely different when you're at home by yourself it's like okay now what <laughs> i don't know mm-hmm. it's different it's a different kind it's hard to yeah yeah still figuring that out i would say for me it varies less by system and more like type of game like if i know it's going to be a one shot or if i know it's going to be sort of a more lighthearted game my process of the process of character creation tends to change um because like if it's going to be sort of a more lighthearted session, sometimes I I don't start with a character concept. I just think, what's the most ridiculous thing I could come up with? <laughs> what's the Fair. weirdest, like, dumbest thing I can, I can I put think, together? I think you and I are in the same on the because that's what happened when we played Foo that one time. When yeah. I played a a character in a scary one sh- one shot where yeah. I played basically a Matthew McConaughey but like <laughs> I forgot but, about that but like a vagabond or or kind uh-huh. of like a yeah <laughs> just super outdoorsy yep 
I forgot about that. What, yeah. what outrageous character can I come up with and not give it too much thought before right. we start? <laughs> and like, Love if we're that. doing like a more, if we're, if it's like a more serious sort of game or a long term game, I might put, more, I might do more of like what we've been talking about, right? Like start, starting with a character concept and then go, all right, how can I make that? So it, mm-hmm. I'd say it varies less by system and more just by the type of game that I'm going to be creating a character for. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, but otherwise I don't think proce- my process changes significantly. Yeah. Mm. I think, I think for me, it, it's a, it's a combination kind of what you said, Lucas, but it does, I think it does depend a little bit on the system. Like if I am, um, if I'm making a character for a system like Dungeons and Dragons, a lot of times I will look for uh, I will look to let the mechanics kind of inspire a character mm-hmm. for me, just yeah. because like that has the highest likelihood of me making a character that is going to have a good time. Because I've yeah. I've kind of done the thing before where I tried to make start with a, a really weird concept and like apply it to D and D, and that can feel very dissatisfying because you can't like quite play out the power mm-hmm. fantasy that you want. Because D and D is like very cool, but also in in some ways very restrictive um but for for looser systems i think i tend to come from the other direction like Mm -hmm. if it's something like troika or something like lasers and feelings where like the sky's the freaking limit um then like i'll i'll kind of just come into it with a loose character concept um and then like from there you know kind of or kind of just go where i go go wherever it takes me so yeah um jolly old of nixless reminding us of uh that spooky sci-fi foo one shot we did where i played an investigator named mox folder with his ai companion skull e yes i remember that i remember that very very clearly good times that's good um and remy says systems change the mechanical finer details but i usually apply high concept theme to any character i make that's fair it's a solid approach that will serve you well regardless of system so it makes sense that you keep that mm-hmm. um gemini says with D D, I usually start with what do i want this character to be able to do and honestly i don't have too much experience playing other systems to go off of that's fair yeah and like some some uh some systems are more rigid about the character creation process than others. And they're very specific. Like you mentioned weave and while weave, like you can kind of, you make choices in weave. Some of it is not your choice, Mm -hmm. right? Like depending on how you play, right? Like you, you're draw you draw random cards from, from the deck in weave uh, and then scan them in and then choose from the options that you're given so like a, some of that it's not you it's it's hard to start with a concept and weave so like yeah. some systems will make it will necessarily change your process just through the way their character creation works but yeah um, yeah hi koala hello welcome hey it's a koala how are you <laughs> i was playing um, neverwinter with koala and some other folks earlier so nice nice yeah characters <laughs> yeah actually it's kind of my process will is just is like this uh roll a d100 and look at the chart to see what my creative process is going to be this day <laughs> <laughs> make a chart make a yeah. chart of all these different ways of creating uh creating a character and then we'll roll randomly on that chart once we're done and okay. then we'll create the character just to add an extra annoying step in between you and your character <laughs> for no good reason other than to say that you did it, let's uh, go. You rolled. You rolled a, a seventy-seven. I guess you have to uh, do twenty-five push-ups and roll again. Yes, the push-ups are <laughs> I, very I, important. Yeah, uh, to get the, like to, to to increase your circulation, uh, increases the blood flow to your to mm-hmm. your brain, uh, so that you can make big brain characters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I see. Anyway, Koala, we're talking uh, character creation, making characters in uh, in tabletop games and stuff. And actually, Remy has an interesting question, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, Remy says, how important is setting to y'all when it comes to character creation? I think world building and setting helps me create characters if I can know the setting better, but I don't know if that's the norm. And I think that, yeah. I think for me, 
setting does tend to does tend to play into it. The more that I know about this, like the more that I know about the setting, the more that like I will be like inspired to make characters that that fit into it or that like that that, that play interestingly off of pieces of the, pieces of the setting. So I think like I don't always need to know a ton about it. I think the biggest thing for setting for me is like having a couple of details and then just like the general vibe of the setting. And then that kind of informs like how I how I make my character or what direction I kind of point them in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the, that's the one that's the thing for me. Well, and also I think it's a good point too, because it makes me think of like some, you know, sometimes like going back to what karaoke night said earlier about like a single detail or vibe or feel that something will like trigger in your mind that like leads to a character can be tr just as true of setting details as it is of art or music or things like that. Like it can be just as true. I'm sure there have been times where like somebody has told me a detail about their world and I'm like, Oh, that's cool. I'm going to make a character that has something to do with that. Right. Yeah. Um, so like that's that's absolutely like le like a legit thing to consider as well. So I, I think I think it is very important um, for me. I think the most important thing, there's no one most important thing uh, as far as what I need in order to start like the process of creating a character. Because I want to have the widest spread of information possible. So there's not like one most important, th I guess the most important thing for me is that I have the most information possible so that I can make uh, a decision. So I can make essentially an informed decision about what character I'm going to make, I think is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, okay. that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't want to, like, you don't want to make a character that belongs in a shonen anime in like, uh, in a, in a world that like is very like well, gritty and, and also, serious. I like to have my characters tied like grounded in the world somehow, mm -hmm. you know, and that might be from something of my own creation, but more often than not, it's from something that I know exists in the world. So I like to have something because like the more ties your character has to something, like, the more grounded your character is in something in the game, the more they're going to emerge, right? The more you're going to be able to understand them. Because there have been plenty of characters that I've made that I just was like, I don't know how to play this. I can play the character mechanically, but not like in terms of who the character is. I don't have a sense of that. I've had plenty of those. And it's usually as a result of them not being tied to anything in the world. So... Yeah, and like in a lot of ways, that's because, like, because, because tabletop RPGs are very like... Um, cerebral is the wrong word. I just had, I just had a... Um, a word for it but because like the because this basically because the setting for a tabletop rpg exists entirely in your head and in the collective heads of everybody else at the table like you the, having those touchstones gives you ways to interact like and engage with engage with the game so like it it's a very in 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 terms of gameplay like it's a very real way of just giving yourself more options to engage with the thing that you, you that, that are reliable that are easy to easy to turn to yeah um koala says i like fish out of water a lot i like uh like i was an industrial revolution-esque world and i was like i should put a druid or air genasi here because it'd be cool to see their take on automation and pollution cool. that's that's a really really cool thing yeah i i that, that's a have i just slightly out of the element yeah, I'm trying to think if I've if I've ever done that now. Like, since you've got me thinking now, trying to see if I, have I ever done me too. that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I guess I have, but not to quite such a striking yeah. degree. Like, not not to not to like the the degree of extremes that you're talking about. Mostly, I play like you know, like the in 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 five e. There's the background outlander, right? And essentially, yeah. like the the feeling that that's intended to uh, to to convey more of that but that's more like you're part of the world and you un yeah. and you're like you're in it you just might not understand the exact place where you are where the campaign is taking place and that's and i feel like what koala is talking about is maybe a little more extreme than that like it's it's literally like ideological it's on an ideological level in some cases unless i'm misunderstanding what you're saying but it sort of feels like that's at least that's the example i think that that's what that example i think conveys to me 
that's more ideological, ideologically fish out of water. That'd be a fun character to play, I have to say. I would love to play a character that's just very me mesmerized, maybe is not the right word, but just complete like, oh, what is this? What? <laughs> it occurs to me that we've come full circle in fantasy, right? Like we're originally like fantasy and sci-fi and stuff like that had the like, the hero out of time trope so that the, cause they believe that the audience needed a, a stand in in world. Right. So, so that like so that the audience would be less confused so, because the protagonist is just as confused as they are. And then gradually that transition to like, no, it's just fantasy is like, these are just, this is just a story about the people in the world. You'll get it as you go along because I'm, I, as the author, I'm trusting you to understand what I'm telling you. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> But now we've come full circle. Now we're talking about like, hmm, maybe I should try playing a hero out of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there is something to be said, like for creating a character who doesn't know anything. Like characters, yeah. characters who don't like know much about the setting that they're in can be such a gift to the DM because there's there's so many times where like you're like how am I going to tell them about this thing that I have made? And then <laughs> one of your players just goes, hey, what this? Um, and then you're like, well, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. So like that can be that can be in many ways, like that character trait can be a gift to yeah. your DM. I, I always think about how Freeman talks about like when you when you first made your barbarian character, a lot of it was was from like the character, the concept of your character was. Uh, was one that you made so that you like intentionally didn't have to know things. <laughs> yeah, you as like, the player know, didn't have to know stuff. I don't have to know too much, not too much. <laughs> yeah, and and I think that character was a uh, Outlander too. But mm -hmm. we, we did the Highlander as the flavor because this this he was a human in in Five E, but we wanted to make him just a little taller, and he lived in the mountains north, the northern mountains. Yeah, and was just a little unaware of the customs of of uh, common folk yeah which was a lot of fun to play in several different segments yeah this is the dance of my people <laughs> <laughs> my favorite thing this is just, oh, this is not man. really relevant it's just a, a fun aside um, one of my favorite things about that character that freeman played is a barbarian uh and he so there was a moment where everybody they were in a new city and they were in a tavern and the rogue started like they were in a tavern they just started making shit up about about freeman's character yorith wait was it him no yeah it was him he just started like telling everybody that yorith was raised by bears um and got a bunch of people to believe it and to this day see the thing is there was a character who had just joined the party like a player character who had just joined the party and to this day like i think you were like level maybe five or six at the time and now they're yeah. closing on level 20 and there's one character who joined the party right before that point and really was just getting to know everybody who to this day still believes that still believes yeah, that yours was raised by bears well, it was funny because when i guessed it in your guys's like, game one of the first things that lucas told me was like yeah he was raised by bears <laughs> <laughs> that's all you which he absolutely know. wasn't but that's like <laughs> I mean, there are bears nearby, but I mean, they, we were we we're on friendly terms. Yeah. You know? um, mm -hmm. I stay out of your place, you stay out of mine. My favorite but... thing, though, is that like <laughs> nobody has explained it to him, like that that to that other character that Yorith was not raised by bears, largely because it's never been brought up. Because in in that character's mind, uh, he's like he was raised by bears, huh? Oh, huh, that that tracks. That yeah, tracks. I mean, I that makes sense. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I see yeah. it. <laughs> I see the rage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I miss Yorith, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Verdman says, for me, I tend to sometimes get decision paralysis when I try to go mechanics first mm. in character creation. Same. Uh, mm -hmm. There are so many interesting mechanics going on in most TTRPGs that I typically have to create the character's prologue first in order to help my decision making process. I actually had not considered the idea that a character concept could be a good roadmap to avoid like information bloat. That's a really interesting thought. Huh. I mean like it's it's not like a it's not like it's this is like the first time that's ever occurring to me, but I think it's just the first time that it's ever I've ever thought about it in those terms. But mm. yeah, you're you're right. There is something about putting character concept first 
that helps you sort of hmm and see now i'm having now my gm brain is going now which was i'm like oh yes new characters new new players maybe instead of introducing to them them to the game of like by by telling them this is the this is what this class does and this is what this class does you start by saying what character do you what what do you want from your character like what do you want your character right. to do what ideas do you have hmm. yeah Sorry, right, my let's brain. Get the just... dice out. Let's let's, let's roll go. Some, let's go. Let's go. Characters just, yeah. right now. All right, what just do we want to do? Impromptu RPG. Um, <laughs> this is just like good. Uh, Actually, we should probably of... do that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. I actually do think Sorry, that no. would be fun. Yeah. Char- yeah. Character creation part two on Ramble Mancy, where we just roll it like we just try out different methods of rolling up characters all night. See. That's not where I was going with that. I but that's cool too. I like that. But what I was I was gonna go. Yeah, we just like show up with like a really like a really rules light system, right? And like have no con like lasers and feelings for instance. Yeah, and have right. no concept of any character or setting or anything like that, and just make shit up for for a couple of hours. <laughs> just completely <laughs> make it up. Everything. That's, that actually sounds and chat absolutely and the chat participate with let the chat participate with rules. That would be dope. I oh, oh yeah, I love this idea. That okay. would be so I'm, much oh, fun. I'm, I'm oh. like kind of into it. I love chaos. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> right the, organized like, right chaos the is my jam. Exactly. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Yeah, it's like chaos but with railings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. With, it's like chaos like, but with the with the harness yeah. and the and the lines. Yeah, <laughs> you can listen. You can you can hang out from over there to over there. Everything else in between, I don't give a shit. Like. <laughs> Fair Anything game. goes. All of these props in here, the caltrops, the 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 rubber ducky filled with sour cream, like oh, yeah. all of it is just yours to play with. That actually would be super fun. Um make a make a character based off chat's rules. Ooh, oh that could be fun too. Ooh. Like because remember that system, Freeman, that you and I rigged up to uh he's gone. Okay. Uh <laughs> So long, well, he's gone. All right, uh, John, you probably did this with me at one point too. We we, we rigged up a we like created our own system for randomly rolling characters in D anD. d Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like Caitlin's done this before. Caitlin also has a system, her own system that she does. Yeah, I think so. I think she's done that on stream before. <laughs> yeah. Um, chair. Yeah, this is a chair stream now. This is a chair stream. Yep. Uh, <laughs> all right. So Freeman's chair. What what do you what do you think about all this? Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's actually a really good point. Um, mm. that's really that's a that's a good point, Chair. And like Lucas, I think that's honestly like a, a good a good take, like a nice fresh take on the on on this whole like. Yeah. Like, no, I I no, I hadn't really I hadn't really considered that before. Um, but I actually wonder if maybe the opposite might not be true, as well. Thoughts, Chair. Mm. <laughs> Classic Chair. <laughs> all right we're yeah. not doing this anymore <laughs> the bit's over the bit's over everybody. that went I on way we longer both just whole... i love how we both just wholeheartedly committed to that bit like mm-hmm. someone please clip that <laughs> <laughs> i heard my name as i was as i was leaving uh... i thought oh sh- sh- shucks sure? no it's okay <laughs> And it, it your your chair covered for you. You're good. Yeah, we um, had it. We had just a, a riveting conversation with your mm-hmm. chair. Like, you weren't too mean, were you? <laughs> no, they made some. They made some pretty excellent. I points, just. Actually. I really do appreciate Freeman committing to the bit that he didn't even know was happening. <laughs> oh, I, those are my one of my favorites. One of my favorites. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Um... <laughs> You've saved, anyway. me from, you've saved me from many a miserable squat. Mm. No more squats. <laughs> Just sweet chair. Mm-hmm. Bree, the person in chat uh, who is most likely to notice this, has noticed my uh, Brian David Gilbert reference, which is not surprising considering that Bree is the one who put me on to Unraveled. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, clips are not working for geek outs. No. no. Oh, no. It happens. No, I have a clip button, but it is far too late. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nico says we should make an episode about tables, the ones you roll on, and and have chat uh, participating and coming up with entries for the table. We... Here's the thing, Nico. 
your clarification did nothing. Because regardless of what kind of table you're talking about, I'm rolling on it. So I think you're talking about charts. But I also like the idea of an entire episode of Ramblements where we just talk about furniture, specifically tables. (laughs) And now I can't stop thinking about that. All right. Yeah, we're done. Um, uh, Remy says, oh, I was just reminded of the funniest character creation method. Pick a character from popular media and just put them in D&D. <laughs> uh, God, like, you mean, like, literally that character? Or do you mean, like, like uh, a, a uh, anal- like an analogous character in D&D? Because, like, I feel like just literally putting the char- the actual character into D&D would be very funny. Like mm-hmm. Drax not here so I'm going to go ahead and say it for him but putting Deadpool into D&D was would be very funny. Um Yeah. Let's see. Um you can just drop mm-hmm. clips in the Ramble Mancy ch- channel if you created <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you created yeah. One. <laughs> also thank you for the clip uh Geek Outs Ooh. and Koala. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Love it. Love it. Gemini says, serious oh. question. How much does a setting's religion slash gods affect your character? Do you avoid it altogether or engage it depending on what is happening? Hmm. You know, it tends not to be something that I think about too much unless there's like one thing that I specifically grab onto. Like if, if like a, if a, um, yeah, generally not my characters because even if I'm, even when I'm playing a cleric, I tend not to think too, too hard about the gods involved, which I know is a weird thing to say, but like, I tend not to think about it too much. I'm just like, what does this God do? Oh, it does lightning. Okay. That God does lightning. I like lightning cleric let's go right like and that's as far as i think about it tend generally but yeah i think like when it comes to char- I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat when it comes to character creation i very seldom think about uh, think about the pantheon or deities mm-hmm. I, it, it very seldom informs much of my character creation outside of as you said like god does lightning i have lightning powers unless unless and i will say this unless there's something interesting about like the lore of some of the deities that i'm like ooh, that's cool and i want to be involved in that somehow like i Mm -hmm. want that to be relevant to me like then then it does inform it but generally speaking i mean i guess i've had characters that were informed by deities before but mainly not so much actually it wasn't really about the deity but more about organizations that uh like religious organizations so i've had characters that have been informed so like in indirectly i guess you could say Mm -hmm. it has been important to characters i've made before um but it wasn't so much about the deities even then it was more about the organizations that worship the deities so yeah yeah. which i guess you could say is like yeah technically uh the the deities of the setting but yeah no not not much for me generally speaking yeah i, really, yeah, I, don't know how I to think answer. that's mostly because for me like the gods don't seem well i played a lot of homebrew and they seldom wind up being a big part of my homebrew but like mm-hmm. i don't know that they're often very i like they're not terribly often like a big part of the uh of the of the modules either and so like doesn't it doesn't it doesn't come into the into it doesn't seem like a thing that is going to be like one of the most interesting things about a character for me very often in ttrpgs yeah not that it can't be just that for me it's not something that seems most compelling yeah i built a character specifically to have relationship with their deity and it was very fun Mm -hmm. i think Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Continue. Sorry. V, V, and Arzamal. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, yeah. Arzamal, technically not a deity, but well, no, but a other, yeah. but a more than human or a more it's than. Tough, dude. So, yeah, love it. What I was thinking though was that some of this also might be due to the fact that 
most settings that like koala is saying honest koala says honestly thinking about deities gives me a headache which is why i never play pally or cleric and i think that's i want to take that point and kind of run with it for a second because when you're home brewing a setting any most homebrewed uh settings that i have played in have you have used existing deities from existing pantheons um, and have just sort of borrowed from them. And I think because of that, the deities tend not to feel connected to the setting mm-hmm. because they're just sort of grafted on. Uh, yeah. and they 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 take um they take whatever form they are there to like just to exist as a token presence. And they take whatever form the GM decides they need to in the moment if it becomes relevant. And so because of that, I tend not to think about them that much. Mm -hmm. I wonder if my experience with that would be different if I was playing in a setting with like homebrewed deities that were intrinsically tied to the world. You know, now that you mention it, I played I played one session in, um, I don't know if Remy is still here. I played one session in uh, Caitlin and Remy's home game when I visited way back in the before times. Um, and uh, something that their GM had done was to make a new list of deities that were entirely formed by William Blake's uh, pantheon of like made up gods and that was one of the coolest things that i've ever seen but that was one of the few times i think because i was i was playing a a cleric um that was one of the few times that i have actually sat down and like kind of had my character be informed by them because like i i they felt very unique to the setting and like uh the gm spent like a a little bit of time kind of talking to me about like the 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 various like how, how the religion like worked and was like part of the world's like culture and politics and stuff like that. So that that actually was an instance, I think, where I did do that. And mm-hmm. very much because of the conversation that we've been having where like it's it's something that feels very like alive in the world, not just kind of like tacked on, like you right. say. Right. And that's the thing. I think that that tends to be why I don't and tend to engage with like deities in a setting when it comes to character creation too often, because they so often are just sort of borrowed, tacked on, or just sort of an afterthought. And therefore don't feel like they have much place or significance in the world. And therefore there's no reason that I should make my character have that. Um, mm-hmm. Because like there's there's nothing that's more of a bummer, right? Than like creating your character around a cool idea that just never fucking comes up. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. It's super, it super feels bad. Yeah. And so like you, you tend, at least I do, I tend, you tend to avoid it. You tend to avoid building your character around something that you that feels already to you like it's not gonna be a big part of the setting. So, yeah, I know the most huh. recent cleric that I made. Um, I actually just was like, I don't know. I think the GM told me what what gods existed in the setting, and I was like, Can I just like I'm a forge cleric? Can I just get my powers from like a forge spirit or something? <laughs> and like, and I know that's a very warlocky sounding mm-hmm. thing, but I just liked the idea, and and my GM went with it, and I'm very here for it. Um, yeah, because like you know having having, a, it felt more like interesting to me than like picking ah yes I am a random, Fairbog forge cleric <laughs> who worships more than God of the Dwarves. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They have limited spells, but warlock. I love warlocks. I do. They're love, very I, cool. They are. I, they're patron to to their to their uh, their handy. Uh, although I haven't used it for so long, I forgot what it was. He- anyway. The hex and the hex and vex. The, yeah, just <laughs> the whole hex and vex. The whole hex and you, just, you hex them and then you eldritch blast. <laughs> yeah, eldritch blast. Oh man. Yeah, the old hex and vex. The trusty cantrips. If you <laughs> um, yeah, like, and I, I think the thing that I'm saying right now about like the 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 connection to the gods and the settings, mm. and how that makes it how much that informs how much that influences my characters. I don't think that's the only reason because I think Jim and I did bring up a good point, which is like how a person feels about like religion and deities in real life maybe informs that a little bit too because for sure. I will say like I mean I 
I am uh, an an atheist, although I have described myself as an apatheist before. But, um, <laughs> but, and so like I know that that tends to like inform a lot of my choices as it regards that as well. That said, it has never stopped me from playing cleric or paladin or whatever. It just stops me. It does mean that I don't tend to engage with the religious aspect of those classes or characters as much. Yeah. So in part because I just don't have the experience with it myself and also because I just would it would feel strange to me to do it. So like even pretending. So I don't know. So I think you're I think you're also right about that, Gemini. I think that is an also also a valid point. That's cool. I yeah. mean, that, that's kind of why I was so comfortable with Yorith's whole ancestor thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, going back to Yorith, I love that the ancestors that he that were connected to him through his abilities, and he could they could talk to him through a a spirit animal. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting thought. I, I'm glad yeah. you asked the question because it's like it's mm -hmm. not really. I mean, that's something I gave thought to before, but not in that depth. So that's I'm glad you asked the question. Yeah, no, I really I think the conversation, especially about like gods being kind of like tacked on to a lot of homebrew settings right. is, is another interesting like was was something that was revelatory to me. Yeah, me too. Like that was something that I, I had to I had to really kind of like think about that. And I was like, huh. There's a pattern here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and Remy says, uh, just commenting on mm -hmm. the thing that I that I was talking about earlier, uh, he says, speaking more to John's experience, the deities in that campaign are pretty interesting, and I think be uh, because both its homebrew and our characters, save for the one that I was playing, um, are not very religious people, and we want to learn more about the gods since they inform some actions we're doing and help us understand the setting more. So, like, it's it's a very, like, it's a pathway to understanding, like, what's going on around you, as opposed to kind of, like, just being there to grant you your godly powers and, you know, pat you on the back, give you a thumbs up, and then every so often send you a vision. Yeah. Um, Spigs, hello, Spigs, uh, says, I feel that most GMs use existing pantheons uh, because not only does it require a ton of additional story prep, requires the GM to have to explain their existence and relation to the world, to the group, which can be very time consuming. Yeah, that's, and that's kind of, that's why I do it. I mean, although John and John can tell you, I have definitely then retroactively added a creation myth into the world, just sort of taking mm -hmm. my own spin on, on that. So I have done that too. Um, but only because it became relevant to the story <laughs> because it mattered how it had happened to the story because that's that's the kind of thing you got to think about when your party approaches 20th level. <laughs> that's the kind of thing you got to know. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Walnuts uh, says also, I also think within a lot of D&D worlds, the gods don't participate in them for some mm -hmm. reason or another. Yeah. So when you get to do more interaction, uh, so when you get to do more interaction with the deities, like that happens at higher levels. Yeah, right. exactly. So, like, it's kind of like the same idea, which is like that it's not really relevant at the parts of the campaigns that are most likely to happen. <laughs> Which is actually, and I'll make a commentary on, on a, a well-known piece of media here, like Critical Role is interesting in that way because mm -hmm. like Jester as a cleric yeah, from level one at the beginning of the campaign has been like very engaged with her deity mm -hmm. in a very interesting way. So like that's just, I think that's a cool example of like the god very much being involved from minute one. And I kind of like, I kind of like almost want to see more settings where there's less of the like all of the gods can communicate in mysterious messages from beyond the great gate in the heavens um, kind of stuff. So well, it's, it's, it's cooler yeah. to have them more involved early on. Mm -hmm. I have, although, and here's why I think that sometimes that happens. You get that separation, mm -hmm. like that, that separation between gods and mortals being sort of a conceit of the world is often because, and I say this because I've had experience with this as well. Uh, that often if you have your gods being direct participants in the world, it can be very difficult to ride the line between like, like if the powerful wizard in town sends you on a, on like some errands and whatever, you're like, why, why didn't you deal with this? The answer is because he's busy. When gods are doing that, it becomes harder to explain. And not only that, but then sometimes if the answer is, 
maybe they aren't busy and they are directly participating. It becomes difficult to like eventually enough interference starts feeling like, okay, our actions aren't really our own. And unless that is the theme of your campaign, Mm -hmm. I can see that that can become kind of oppressive. So I suspect that that conceit is often in games for that reason so that the game doesn't tilt over into the gods control everything and every and nothing we do matters right so because i've i've experienced that i've been that Mm -hmm. gm before who like had the gods be like active participants in the world and it started to feel after a while like there was no agency like there was no free will kind of thing right Uh, like the gods were just playing with people and that's fine again if that is what you're going for, if you're going with m- the whole mortals are the playthings of the gods, then great. <clears throat> but if that's not what you're going for, then it becomes like you get resentful players because the gods are supposed yeah. to be these like, in some cases, uh, beneficent figures. But to the players, it feels like they're these oppressive puppet masters, right? And so, right, yeah. Um. But yeah, um, I saw another thing that I wanted to go. Nico had a question. Here's a fun question. What's your favorite reflavor you've done when creating a character? Hmm. Hmm. I know I've done it because this is a very common thing that I do with my characters. I'm like, what what breaks the mold of the care of the common character type? I'm trying to think now. Oh, favorite favorite reflavor that I have done. I mean, I oh. guess this is a reflavor, kind of, which is I once made a multi class monk and illusion, like drunken master monk and illusion wizard. <laughs> um, and his whole thing was just sort of like. Like, typically, you think of the wizard as this, like, scholarly type or whatever. But this guy was much more, like, just sort of, like, (laughs) your resident trash baby disaster child, right? Like, he is just a mess. uh, Just a mess of a person. And, like, so he sort of went against the the type of wizard and against the type of monk who tends to be this very serene, wise, like, whatever. That's, like, the, the archetypal sort of monk and wizard and i went away from both of those and i was like this dude is just he's just a disaster uh <laughs> yeah i think my favorite reflavor and maybe this is just recency bias but one of my favorite reflavors that i've done uh is actually the forge cleric that i am playing right now um which is less about like uh his 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 whole character concept was someone who listens and asks um and so he's less like a the idea was to have a character who was less kind of like a blunt force uh and more like somebody who waited for the right opportunity for the right question for the right answer um and so instead of having a forge cleric who you know is like hammering bits of metal into shape all of the time he like you know collects all of the pieces that seem to feel right and then like will wait uh will wait and listen and then ask them to take the shape that they want to take together and then see what happens and so like that's my that's my favorite i think my favorite reflavor was as opposed to like having uh, a like a cleric who was the you know patron to one of the gods of smithing or creation who who bonked things into shape like having like a, as a, like a very a very like almost naturalistic approach to to the forge thing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm, cool. One of my favorite reflavors. Um, <laughs> saw Jolly Old Nicholas saying, "Ooh, me! I made an arcane archer and reflavored every ability to be completely non-magical." Yep. That's true. Nice. I GM'd for that character. It was so much fun. <laughs> uh, Van Helsing. That's cool. Oh, okay. I kind of want to do something like that at some point. Remy says the main D and D PC I play is a bard in a party with two other bards, so I play him more like a rogue because our actual rogue became an arcane trickster. Cool. Um. 
Walnut says, I have made a character that I have not played yet as a cook, artificer, alchemist. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I like that. That's a cool approach. Um, one Jolly says, I want to reflavor a wizard to a wizard, but he's a dog. But I think that's a little different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at that point, Sweet. you're talking like, is it the like, fl- is the flavor that he's a dog or are there mechanical benefits? Because I think that's where the, that's where you decide whether it's different than a reflavor or not. I, I, I did you did you like polymorph yourself into a dog? Do you like is that what's going on here? It's like no. Yeah, I, I, I Dean says Pugmire, wizard. and yes, <laughs> yep, absolutely, Pugmire, dog Pugmire. Wiz- doggy wizards. Yep. Yep. Oh God, I feel like there's some. There's another one. I feel like there's there is one that I've done, like a reflavor that I've done, and I just cannot remember what it was. Hmm. And like relatively recently too. I can't remember. Which is weird because I've played a very small number of characters recently. Right. <laughs> um. Oh wait, no, I know what it was. In the uh, Monster of the Week game that I played, the one shot um, that oh, I played yeah. on Friends Who Roll Dice uh, uh, the day before Halloween, I played a character. Uh, the 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 um, the type of character that I was playing was um, the spell slinger, which the book describes as being like somebody who is very well studied, sort of like your archetypal wizard type, like your your book nerd, very studious or whatever. But instead I played him like I played him more like a uh just sort of vagabond, right? Like I I was like I decided he was like a hedge wizard who just learned the stuff that he could find get his hands on, right? And so mm-hmm. he just yes and he was also a greaser for some reason. Anyway, just because I thought it was fun. Um but yeah like he so he wasn't like the typical uh what what is expected that you do with it with a spell slinger in monster of the week so I, that's the one that i was thinking of yeah yeah actually i don't know i don't know if this counts as a reflavor or just as an interesting use of an item that i was given um but like i i was playing a game of troika and one of the items that my character had was like an ever-living rose and we talked about this a little bit when matthew gravelin was on um like from from the game design standpoint but uh i remember like just kind of in the moment reflavoring that from like a flower that lives forever to like a sort of a sort of like magical item it it became like a it became like a magical item like something something to do with like life and healing in my head and i wound up using it to to restore life to something that had died uh and that was like that was certainly not the intended use of the item but uh it sure did work out that way (laughs) Um, let's see. It's not cool. All I said, I play a lot of barbarians, but I played a barbarian once who was just really nice and sweet and quiet. It was very entertaining. I love that. That's great. Um, oh, God. That's like them. that one time we had. I don't know if you were in that, John. I don't think you were. Where we played, uh, we played a one shot, like an all monstrous PCs uh, one shot where like all the characters. The, the characters were, I think Jolly was in that, because um, there was, like, a kobold sorcerer or, like, something like that, a goblin warlock and a bugbear barbarian. And the bugbear was just, like, his whole thing was that he just wanted to be friends with everybody. He just wanted he just wanted to be friends with everyone. Um, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love them. <laughs> yeah. And he, he when he raged, it was usually because somebody tried to hurt his friends or him. Oh. <laughs> that, uh, that's the most wholesome character concept Beautiful. to go out on. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, Gemini says we are all so predictable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is this is oh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm sorry I get super mad sometimes, guys. It's not directed at you, I promise, but it helps, right? We won. Oh. Oh, right. <laughs> Damn. Oh, I just I just I just want oh. to I just want to give them head pats. Like mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Wow. Well, we are <laughs> past the end of our time. Um, so as, we're going to. Yes. As always. As always. As, as it was tradition. written, so shall it be. Oh, All right. No, not that. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Well, um, <clears throat> thank you, everybody, for coming by, for hanging out with us, for talking with us about everything, about everything character creation-wise. Um, we will return on Wednesday for more Infinite Horizon, the most recent episode of which you can find on YouTube. It is there today. Um, and I will upload the podcast. That's a thing that I'm going to do that I have not done yet that I should have done. And it will be up on Sunday as it usually is because I will do it. Um, it's time to redact it, redact it, redact it. <laughs> uh, and of course, I'm very excited that next Friday we will be back uh, with uh, with more Ramblemancy with Bad Pitches Part 2 with Alex Perkins. <laughs> Featuring the one and only Alex Perkins. <laughs> I'm so excited for that. Let's see what other horrible monstrosities we can create. Uh, also next week, interestingly, this week is different because un- unlike our normal week, we will not be back. Like, Infinite Horizon is not the next thing that will be happening because In Too Deep character prologues will be starting on Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. They will be available immediately on VOD uh, right here on this channel, and it will be on YouTube at a later date. I don't know exactly when. But we haven't figured out our schedule for YouTube uploads for that yet, but um, that will be up. Uh, for those who don't know and haven't heard yet, In Too Deep is our brand new uh, D&D 5e uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist campaign that will be officially starting at the beginning of the module in January when we come back from our break. But these next couple of weeks, we will be having our character prologues where you'll get to meet small chunks of the cast at a t- and their characters at a time to get to know their characters and sort of slowly sort of uh, get to know the world a little bit. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited for you to meet the characters and see the cast in action because they are great. Um, so yeah, so we'll be, we'll be in with that. Um, let's see. I feel like there's other stuff. Uh, just stuff about our break, but I'm not going to cover that again. You, you can just watch the beginning of the episode and find out there. <laughs> yeah, past Lucas has got you covered. Yeah, pa- past me went on way too long about that, and so present me is over it. Um, <clears throat> Cherry, you got anything to add? Yeah, good question. Do you? Well, let me hold on. Let me just let me give the chair this. Let me give the chair a moment. Let me give the chair some time. Okay. Shall I? All right. Yeah. Okay. Actually, that's a really good reminder. Yeah. All right. Well said. Um. So, uh, <laughs> remember that you can uh, you can always check out our past broadcasts of our tabletop RPG shows on YouTube. And uh, Infinite Horizon, you can also catch on podcast. And as soon as we figure out how we're going to host our other shows on podcast uh, in a non-confusing way, they'll be there too. We're still working on it came from the loop because we it's <laughs> just the way that all that stuff works. Um, but podcast sites. Yeah. You can, <laughs> podcast sites, am I right? Um, you, can, <laughs> you can also, uh, if uh, we are affiliates here on Twitch, so you can subscribe. And that helps us subscribe. directly uh, achieve many things that are directly beneficial to you because it just improves what we do here for your enjoyment. Uh, so that is a great way to support this channel um if you are a subscriber here on twitch you also get access to some of our lower tier patreon rewards and they are pretty cool uh we just had our media club our monthly media club recommendations where you get to see some of the staff and cast of rule of lores media lists things we've we've been watching listening to or playing over the uh last month um maybe get some new recs out of that um and of course, tabletop tool chest, which is a great use for exactly what we're talking about here today, 
usable for like creating character concepts for creating game and session planning for your as as a gm or if you're not into any of that you can use them for writing prompts and stuff like that um you so write your fanfic use our prompts to write your fanfic yeah yeah be free uh <laughs> but, um and of course we have our uh our higher tier um which is only available to patrons uh, which uh, is our world building tier where so once a month we get together with our world builders and build out some stuff for Infinite Horizon for the world so your ideas can be represented and manifest on screen during the games. Um, and uh, and yeah, so that those are all great ways to support this very channel. So if you liked what you saw here tonight and what you see here on a regular basis those are great ways to do that uh and we appreciate it very much shout out to all of our subscribers and our patrons because we literally wouldn't be able to do some of the stuff that we've been doing without you uh so yeah that's and some of the stuff that is coming also we would not be able to do it without you but i can't tell you about that but thank you in advance um and let's see what else was I going to say? That's pretty much it. Oh, another way that you can support us as well as making sure that you're wearing some dope styles. So we've got merch. We have a merch store, which we don't talk about enough, but we do have it. Uh, you can get Rule of Lore merch uh, shirts mostly. There are hoodies in there. The very mug that Freeman has been drinking from on this episode is there we also have infinite horizon stickers which i straight up forgot about which we I keep forgetting we have stickers we have stickers infinite one. horizon stickers i think heart of handprints has some um awesome. that that they put on on their uh on their laptop if i'm not unless i'm much mistaken um which is excellent uh and I wild think i might be putting one of these on the computer <laughs> Ooh, yeah gosh. yeah 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 there you go um we should make a christmas sweater yeah karaoke Ooh. nights is... i wish you that they what? had that uh, that option on there but we're we are bound by what the uh stream lab store has available um but we just we just put santa hats on literally all yeah we just put horizon. santa hats on everything. <laughs> just yeah there change the star background to snow boom perfect yeah um yeah um that's it that's all i got uh Oh, Infinite Horizon t-shirts as well. I don't know if I said that yet, but those are on there. They're very comfortable. They really They're are. They're super comfy. They're very soft. It's maybe the most comfy t-shirt that mm -hmm. I have. They are so yeah. soft. And they don't get less less soft after multiple washings. So yeah. true. They maintain. They their maintain height. their softness. Yep. Streamlabs merch is quality. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to go. Uh... Yeah, that's all I gotta say. That's that's uh, that's all I have to say about that. Um, but we don't want to go. We don't want to, <laughs> which is why we're still here, like fifteen minutes after we're supposed to stop. I don't. Now I have. Now I have David Tennant's final scene as the Doctor in my head. Damn it, John. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't want to go. Well. Damn. Ouch. Oof. My heart. On my, that my note. Two <laughs> on that note. Uh, anyway, chat. We love you very much. Yeah. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we will see you, hopefully, on Tuesday for uh, for the prologue ep first prologue episode of Into Deep. But if not, we will see you the next time you decide to come roll with us. Good night and good zone, everybody. Bye. <laughs>